In our bizarre economy, we hear many things, and ideas are constantly being thrown out to us. This all tends to flow together and help us develop a strategy as to how we should cope with the changing times. One thing we continue to hear is that a war is being waged to eliminate cash. Not only are most people going along with this, but many have embraced the notion. Some people view carrying cash as dangerous or burdensome. This also dovetails with their desire to spend more than they can afford, when using a credit card, it is far easier to continue spending money you do not have. All things considered, when asked, is the war on cash a real thing being directed from those on high, sadly we must answer yes. Cash reflects options for the people, and it appears those in charge of such things want and gone. Currencies were developed to facilitate and ease transactions between individuals and businesses, the war on cash is simply another way Washington can continue to show its favoritism towards big business. Small businesses often rely more on small cash transactions and often lack the ability to process other forms of payment. It is ironic that while big businesses and companies like Amazon flourish with each move government makes, the small businesses on Main Street are left worse off. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The cashless society where records are made, and kept reflecting every transaction we make, even down to buying a candy bar also allows the government to monitor our every move. This is something Big Brother type government strongly aspire to under the guise it will extend its ability to protect us or tamp down on crime, tax evasion, and corruption. For some reason, they seem to think this will allow them to collect more taxes, yet it comes at the same time they continue to tilt the tax code in favor of massive companies. The way the government has handled coins during the crisis is a clear indication of its unconcern over the role cash plays in our economy. When coin shortages developed, little or no effort to straighten out the mess was instituted. Considering the massive number of coins sitting unused in jars and cans across America, it is a situation that could easily be resolved. In fact, coinage has yet to return to full use following the crisis, and claims of coin shortages persist. Another place this war on cash is showing its head, is that as of July 1st, my bank started to charge a cash handling fee of 13 cents per hundred dollars. Simply put, banks want and feel they are in a position to charge customers for the inconvenience of having their employees handle cash. Let me be clear, banks, saving accounts, and other vehicles designed to hold cash, are paying little or nothing in the way of interest. With the numbers just out that the CPI is up for the 15th straight month, cash is under assault. This reflects the fourth straight month above 5% on a year-over-year -year basis. Well, this is the first time the month-over-month -month CPI has come in below expectations since November 2020, that is not something worthy of celebration. The CPI is routinely criticized for understating and not accurately portraying the true rate of inflation. Another issue is, this could be merely the new variant's impact creating the illusion inflation is not rising as rapidly as some people think. Inflation, currency debasement, and a slew of other problems, have always haunted those holding fiat currencies. This does not mean placing your wealth into one of the new cryptocurrencies is the solution. It does not help that in our world, where everything seems to be manipulated, central bankers and their ilk, all seem to be moving in the same direction. The masses are trapped in a box, and the sides are slowly being moved inward. 
because central banks must keep a lot of liquidity in the system in order to keep it functioning. We have the potential of reaching the place where we drown in paper money and inflation soars. This would signify the end of this war on cash, and that cash had lost. It is difficult to justify leaving your wealth in cash that is rapidly losing its value. As we stare into the face of rising inflation and possibly lower negative interest rates, the reality that all fiat currencies are in trouble, and this is just one big Ponzi scheme, becomes very apparent. How fast events unfold is impossible to predict just as important as the order in which the four major currencies fail. We have good reason to be concerned about this, because it has the potential to strip us of our wealth and cause major disruptions throughout society. Until then, which may be years away, cash has value and plays a very important part in our lives. Of all the mass delusions running rampant in the culture, none is more spectacularly delusional than the conviction that we can all get fabulously rich from speculation while producing nothing. The key characteristic of speculation is that it produces nothing. It doesn't generate any new goods or services, boost productivity or increase the functionality of real-world essentials. Like all mass delusions, the greater the disconnect from reality, the greater the appeal. Mass delusions gain their escape velocity by leaving any ties to real-world limitations behind, and by igniting the most powerful booster to human euphoric confidence, known, greed. Lost in the mania of easy wealth from speculative trading, is the absence of any value creation in the rotation churn of moving bets from one table to the latest hot game. In flipping houses side unseen, no functionality was added to the house and transferring bets on one cryptocurrency to another, or from one meme stock to another, no value to the economy or society was created. In the mass delusion, that near-infinite wealth can be generated without producing anything, creating value has no value. The delusion is that, I can get rich producing nothing but speculative gains, and then I can buy all the stuff somebody else is making. The fantasy powering the speculative frenzy is, once I get rich, I'll stop working and live off my wealth. It's interesting isn't it, how everyone can get rich via unproductive speculation, quit their jobs, and then live off the productive work of somebody else who failed to get rich off speculation. Maybe that's why all the container ships are lined up at Long Beach, waiting to unload the goodies made in China for American speculators to buy. This is what happens when the incentive structure of the economy decays, so that being productive has little upside, i.e., working is for chumps, while speculating is all upside, get rich quickly and easily. Everyone knows, great empires became great by transferring their critical supply chains to competing nations, living it up on borrowed printed money, exploiting the highest bitter wins regulatory governance system and incentivizing speculation while pushing wage earners into debt and tax servitude. Bone up on your history bucko, all great nations got there by quitting boring tiresome productive work, to speculate on illusions of value with borrowed money. This is the result of monopolies and cartels becoming the financial and political power centers of the nation. Maximizing private gains is all that matters in this incentive structure, and so treating employees as chattel to lower costs, offshoring critical supply chains to squeeze out a few more dollars of profits, engineering products to break down, buying regulatory barriers and free passes and tax breaks galore with all the billions showered on financiers and other fraudsters by the Federal Reserve. In a word, a system that optimizes corruption. This is how you hollow out a nation and guarantee collapse. The most rewarding skill sets are a sociopathological obsession with maximizing profits by any means available, and speculating with Fed free money for financiers. The millions of retail speculators are simply picking up the cues being given by the billionaires who gained their wealth by issuing debt to fund stock buybacks and other financial manipulations. Working for monopolies and cartels is for chumps, because monopolies and cartels have zero incentive to share profits with mere employees. Their profits are made not by taking care of their workforce, but by regulatory capture, artificial scarcities and financialized destruction of competition. 
First, borrow billions, thanks to the Fed and Wall Street. Destroy the competition, for example, the taxi industry. Then once the competition has been wiped out, jack up prices, because now consumers have no choice other than another member of the cartel. Speculative wealth is phantom wealth, a flickering illusion of prosperity. All speculative bubbles pop, and all speculative bubbles inflated by borrowed money and central bank manipulation, pop even more ferociously than bubbles funded by actual savings. By incentivizing speculation and corruption, reducing the rewards for productive work and sucking wages dry with inflation, America has greased the skids to collapse. As with all mass delusions, the incentives to continue believing are immense, and the incentives to reconnect with reality few. So in conclusion, the speculative gains to be made in the collapse of the mass delusion will be spectacular. There's nothing like the collapse of a hollowed-out completely corrupt economy to generate outsized profits for nimble speculators. Just keep your speculative winnings on number 22 on the roulette wheel, a Casablanca movie reference. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.